Hello, everyone, and welcome to Straws Community College Conservation Internship Webinar for the summer of 2023. My name is Salida Moran, and this is my colleague, Alba Estrada Lopez, and we are part of the Straw Education Team. We will be the ones facilitating and supporting the internship this summer. Before we all get started, I would love for us to start with a land acknowledgement. The Point Blue headquarters are located in the Coast Miwok and Southern Pomo tribes, currently recognized as the Federated Indians of Great Rancheria. Their ancestral homelands range between Navarro, Marshall, Tamales, San Rafael, Petaluma, Bodega, and the Sebastopol area. If you are not familiar with land acknowledgements, they are a practice of gratitude for the original stewards of the lands we live on and an acknowledgement of the historic and current settler colonialism that these tribes continue to experience today. Let's all take a collective deep breath as we acknowledge the indigenous communities whose lands we are on now. Thank you all. The CCCI internship is an opportunity for community college students to discuss the histories and context of the conservation field and explore how to navigate the environmental field as black indigenous and people of color. So with that in mind, let's take a little bit of time to go over what the CCCI program is about. To get us started, the image to the right here is of an opening circle, something Straw does at the beginning of every community restoration day, in which we take time to orient ourselves to our surroundings and establish the purpose for the day and why we are there. That's what we're doing here in this slide. Here, um, we are going over that during this presentation, we're gonna be reviewing the origin of our program. Why are we even here? And then what we're gonna be, then we will be reviewing the need for the internship itself, how it came to be. And then we will be reviewing the internship, the seminar days, the field days and the retreats that will be happening during the scheduling of the internship. And then we will end the webinar with the actual application process and the eligibility for people to apply. So jumping right into it, the story of Straw really begins in a fourth grade classroom about 30 years ago. In a fourth grade classroom 30 years ago at a school in Marin, a fourth grade teacher showed her students a documentary of endangered species. At the end of the documentary, one of her students asked, what can we do to help endangered species? What they ended up doing is they researched a local endangered species that was only native to creeks and streams in Marin and Sonoma counties. And this, this endangered species was, in the next slide, the California freshwater shrimp. After doing some research on the shrimp, they found that it was only local to creeks and streams in Marin and Sonoma counties, and because of habitat loss in those areas, it became endangered. So what they ended up doing is they talked to a local rancher about planting trees along the creeks and streams on his land. This is what that creek looked like before planting, and then after two, six, and eight years, this is what it looked like. Those fourth graders really took the time to research and help these shrimp, and they ended up making a difference. Their shrimp club is what they called it, snowballed into who we are today, which is the STRAW program, which stands for Students and Teachers Restoring a Watershed. In what we do now, we plant California native plants along creek streams and wetlands. And in that work, we help more than just wildlife. We also help human communities, including students, teachers, and the people that they are in community with. After, the, after the, that first planting, we have now helped over 40,000 students, planted over 40,000 native plants, and worked along uh, over 35 miles of riparian habitat and six acres of marshland. And we don't just do this to do this, right? We do this work informed by actual science and by the work that we've done over the last 30 years. Meaning that when we plant the plants we do a lot at the sites that we do, it's informed by science and literature. We also try to plant plants that will survive in the years to come, especially in the face of climate change. So we plant plants that will be able to survive a lot drier climates, a lot wetter climates, um, very severe and extreme weather like we've been having in the Bay Area recently. We also try to plant plants that will have food year round for wildlife, meaning that when wildlife come to the plants that we plant, they'll be able to eat in the winter, spring, summer, and fall, not just in one season.
All righty. So just like our restoration efforts are scientifically rigorous, the type of environmental education we hope to provide our students is also based on research and need. And our internship is one of those. So one of the key research reports that we used when creating the internship was based off Dersita E. Taylor's Green 2.0 report. And here's a direct quote. And to really uplift the essence of this quote, it showed how marginalized communities, especially racially, are not only not represented in the environmental field, but they are also disproportionately impacted. And within that report, there's also this image that talks about career access. So as you can see to the further left, we have internships or early career opportunities. And as you go towards the right, you begin to increase in leadership opportunities. So as you can see, there is quite a significant um, proportion of people of color found in early career opportunities. But as you continue to go up, that really begins to dwindle, which as a result means that many of those diverse perspectives also aren't uplifted as you continue to go to leadership and influence. So because of that, we created our CCI program. And I'll share a little bit more just about last summer and how it continues to evolve. So last summer, we had a cohort of 16 community college interns from all over the Bay Area. And as you can see, our group was really racially diverse. And in the application, you have the opportunity to voluntarily share this information and also elaborate on any ethnicity or cultural identities that you may have. And the internship does seem to be meaningful and enriching to our students. Before the program really began, we inquired with our students if they had any environmental career aspiration. As you can see, about two thirds were very sure that they did and about a third of our students were unsure, but they wanted to still have this internship experience, which is completely okay. After our internship, all of our students wanted to pursue an environmental career. Important to note that doesn't necessarily mean restoration science, but the fact that they're able to have that information that they may or may not want to pursue specifically restoration science is the purpose of this internship. It's just to gain more information. So for summer 2023, the internship that you all be participating in, we have these goals. And the first goal is to gain an understanding of the history, principles, and practices of conservation science. In other words, if you want to have another conservation internship, you know that you at least have the foundational information to go pursue that. The second goal is to create a practice of self-awareness and critical thinking to navigate careers in the predominantly white environmental field as a Black, Indigenous, and person of color. And lastly, to create a sense of belonging and build a supportive community. So the first goal is yes, let's get you in this field or support you to continue to be in this field. And then the second and the third is really about retaining you. So feeling like you have a good network and support system to continue to be curious and help contribute to this environmental field. Alrighty, so, this is a lot of colors, but I'll just orient you very quickly. This is what our 2023 program is going to look like. And the top row has the days of the week, Tuesday through Friday. And in our leftmost columns, we have the dates and also the number of the week. This is an eight week program. So beginning from the top right, you can see how the first week is the only week that's online. We've learned that it's helpful to just have some time before to really orient you all to where you're going, what documents you need to onboard, to get to know each other's name, et cetera. Week two is when we will meet in person. In truth, we'll be meeting in person from um, then on. And we'll meet at the Petaluma headquarters. Um, and that will be on Tuesday and Wednesday from 9 to 3 p.m. And we are very into nourishing our students. So you will definitely have lunch and snacks and hydration and all that good stuff. Starting week three is when we start to get into more of a pattern. Our seminar days will almost always be on Tuesdays from nine to noon. And this is where I welcome you to take a deep breath to make sure you're listening correctly. So field days will be once a week. You get to select whether it's on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, or a Friday. 
it is up to you to know what better accommodates to your schedule. And we hope it is accommodating. We will try to be flexible, but they are eight hour work days. So from weeks three to seven, except week six, when it's 4th of July, we'll be meeting on Tuesdays for seminar days and you will have your consistent field day from then on. And week eight will be a celebration retreat. And that will also be from nine to 3 p.m. This just really shows the information I shared with you all, but just written. Another key piece of information is that we will accept 20 community college students. And this year we are particularly servicing Sonoma and Marin County Community College students. And the reason for that is because we hope that it lessens the transportation barrier if you are just that much more local since many of our sites are in the North Bay area. Okay, seminar days. Again, nine to noon. I welcome you to pause the video right now and give a read through through the tasks and topics. Okay, we are a place-based education program. So as much as we can, we will try to get you to the place to get some education. For example, if we're learning about pollinators, maybe we wanna go outside and get some pollinators safely. This image in the bottom is from some CCI alumni and we were having a blast learning a little bit more about bumblebees. So that's just an example. This is more or less what a seminar day will look like. We'll have some moment to check in, review the agenda. We will share land acknowledgements and we'll definitely support you in that. The majority of our time, we will be learning on some eco subject or some environmental justice topic. And then we'll, we'll definitely have some time to check out. Alrighty, and Sally, that's gonna help guide us through field days. Yes, thank you, Alba. So again, like Alba said, during your eight week program, you're gonna have one field day each week. That will again be either Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, depending on your schedule, because we recognize you are people, you have your own lives outside of this internship and you have schedules to adhere to. When you do join us in the field and you join the rest of our team in the field, you will have an, a bunch of options in what to do. You could join us at one of our three plant nurseries. We have one in Novato, one in Petaluma, and then one along the San Pablo Bay between Vallejo and Petaluma. We, when you visit the nurseries, you would uh, be able to help collect seeds from around the local area and then process those seeds. You could also be helping to repot plants, sanitize things, whatever they need, you're there to help. You could also join us at one of our local sites in the area between Marin to Santa Rosa, where you would be installing and repairing irrigation to make sure that the plants that we have that were planted in the winter by students are getting the water and nutrients that they need to survive. Um, you could also be setting up and taking down cages that protect the plants from getting eaten by local deer and things like that. Another thing you could be doing would be uh, removing weeds from around the plants that were planted in the winter, making sure that they have that the plants that were planted have no competition from the weeds that really could um, make sure that they don't survive. Another really awesome skill that you could learn out in the field this summer is plant data monitoring, where you would go out with the team and with a data sheet and really collect data on how are the plants surviving? What is the survival rate? What do we need to do as a team to improve uh, what we're doing to make sure that the plants live and that they, they survive well? And you would also probably be doing some tool maintenance, which it includes interns and project managers, restoration techs, we all pitch in to make sure we all have the literal tools we need to be out in the field. Mm -hmm. We also have retreat days. And this is just a bit more elaboration on what we will be doing. We will be out in different field sites, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we will be doing restoration efforts per se. So the first orientation retreat is an opportunity to explore these sites and get a little bit more familiar with them and also introduce each other to the new group that we're gonna be with throughout the summer. And then week eight, is more of a culmination retreat in which we'll have time to reflect and share community and just celebrate our learnings and shared experiences. There are a bunch of benefits to joining this internship. One of them would be that you really get to interface and connect with a network with a lot of scientists and potential future mentors in our program, in the STRA program, 
in the nonprofit that we are under Point Blue as a whole, and also in the partners that we work with, local agencies in Sonoma and Marin County. You would also be gaining a lot of hands-on experience and active restoration efforts, meaning that you will have a lot of transferable skills after this internship that you can put on resumes for future job applications that will be really, really helpful, hopefully. Also, we recognize that the work that you would be doing would take up your time and also your effort and labor, and we would we really want to compensate you for that time. And so as part of this internship, you would also be receiving a stipend of up to $1,400 by the end of the summer. And lastly, you would be able to make friends, meaning you would be able to be in a cohort of other people of color who are also potentially interested in the environmental field. And hopefully these are friends that you will remain in connection with after the internship. On top of that, we will also connect you with a mentor, somebody who's been working in the environmental field for a very long time, either at Point Blue or in another government agency that we know or another nonprofit, or potentially students who are in grad school, so they can also help you answer your questions about grad school. Over the past years, this mentorship um, aspect of the internship has been over Zoom because of the pandemic, but we really hope that this year you'll be able to meet with mentors in person, um, and that really will look like however you and your mentor decide at a coffee shop or getting lunch or something like that. And we also do want to uh, note that all the mentors that we've chosen to connect with you all have experience talking about environmental justice issues, and they also understand the significance of mentoring uh, Black, Indigenous, and people of color, um, especially in who are students, who are in a learning setting and things like that. And almost to the end, we have finally have our application process and eligibility, meaning that here is the list that you uh, just have to adhere to in order to apply. One is that you identify as a person of color. We do not check to see um, to for you to prove this. This is just something that you will put on the application. Um, and this is something that you decide for yourself. If you identify as a person of color, then go ahead and apply. You also just need to be currently or enrolled in the future in a community college. If you are not enrolled now, as long as you have a plan to enroll and you know that you will be enrolling in the near future, that is okay. You also need the ability to work in the US, meaning you just have to have authorization to work in the US. And finally, you just have to have a willingness and an interest in talking about topics through the lens of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion within the environmental field. The application process um, or the application is due on Monday, April 17th at 1159. But if you do need more time to apply, please email us, let us know, and we will have some flexibility so that you could apply by Sunday, April 23rd at 1159 p.m. After all the applications are in and we have a chance to review them, we'll have interviews with you between Monday, April 24th to Thursday, April 27th, and then after that, the cohort will be finalized for the internship by Friday, May 5th. And last but not least, once the internship is over, it's not the end. If you do want to continue your time with STRAW and start a part-time job with us, you can apply to our STRAW apprenticeship. It's different from the internship. It's a very, it's completely different, but you could have a chance to apply if you're interested in it. It's a part-time position that begins in the fall of 2023. It's one to three days a week, um, and it would be between 8 to 4 p.m. or 9 to 5, depending on the field need. Means. The main difference in what you would be doing if you were to become an apprentice is you would really have a chance in the fall and winter to work with students because that's when our program works with students and you could really flex and learn a lot of environmental education skills on top of the field skills that we that you will be learning over the summer. And with that, we appreciate your time looking at this video and learning about our CCCI program. Please let us know if you're interested in applying or if you have any questions.